All right, Mark Murphy, which run is better, what Geno's doing or what oh, yeah. Coach Saban's doing? And you're an Auburn guy, so you have to pick Geno to make everybody mad. But what do you think, Mark? Well, you know, Geno was just sort of made, took all the drama out of women's college basketball. Yeah. Because I don't know that he's really that good for the sport because it's sort of boring because everybody knows they're going to win. And uh, um, pretty impressive he's actually done it. Without always having the top recruiting classes, yeah, he's got a lot of really good players. But some other schools have had supposedly better recruiting classes than he has. But it's hard to top that. But I mean, both of them are incredibly impressive. I mean, coaching them. Mark, you're being you give. You're, 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 oh, that's good. Mark, that's right. 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 Mark, get on one side. You got to get on one. Oh, side. he's yeah. doing good. <laughs> All right. I'll, I go with Gino because he's changed the whole sport. Well, one of the things you said though is kind of true. They haven't had the number one recruiting class every year where Coach Saban has, and hey, that's part of coaching. So I ain't blaming him for that. But right. it's really a silly question, but just one that's kind of worth. They're both great, uh, and so uh, they're both dominating their sport. But I think just the way that UConn does it. I mean, they destroy everybody. Uh, so anyway, that's not what we got you on I for remember- today. Joe Chaffee had a really good team uh, well, many years ago, and uh, they had to go play an NCAA tournament game up at Stillhurst, Connecticut. And uh, I was that's when Connecticut really got my attention. They won that game easily. That was a team that, that Auburn had that year was, was really pretty good. It wasn't a Final Four quality team like some of the other teams Champy had, but it, you know it was one of the better teams in the country. Uh, but- about Auburn football, they run a lot of different stuff offensively. Do you see that uh, all three of these quarterbacks that they have, not dis- discounting the guy at, in Florida that's a freshman, are going to get playing time in each game because of, of the things that they do based on what the defense does? Or do you think it will be narrowed down to one guy like it was Marshall with just a little bit of substituting a quarterback? I think they're going to go with one one guy. I really do. Okay. Now, the, the way it might be different, say Sean White ends up being the starting quarterback because he's not that great a runner. I think what we could see is like in uh, 2009 when Chris Todd was the quarterback who was not a good runner at all, they would run a wildcat package to give them a, a running threat in the quarterback position. Uh, and they've got a lot of guys who could do that. And, and John Franklin, uh, the backup quarterback, could certainly run that package. Uh, I think he'd be the logical choice. Although, you know, the guy, guy like Jason Smith, who's very fast from the Mobile, and he was a high school quarterback who's converted to wide receiver. Marcus Davis, wide receiver, senior, who's converted to wide receiver. He could do it too. And Ryan Davis. Sophomore, who was a really good quarterback, set passing records in high school. Uh, you know, he could run that wildcat off. Though, so, but I, I think they're going to go with one quarterback. Do you think it's going to be the, the, the junior college kid? I hope so. I don't think he's won the job yet. I think it's still very much wide open. And uh, I'm hoping on the spring game on Saturday, you're going to let him go live, and uh, so that he can run the ball a lot in the defense can have a, a fair chance to try to uh, tackle him. I think it'd be good for the defense. I think it'd be good for John Franklin. Of course, there's always the uh, uh, you know chance somebody's going to get hurt when you go live. Uh, mm-hmm. Yesterday at practice, Tyler Queen, uh, one of the quarterbacks, was had his uh, right shoulder in a sling, and he got hurt uh, running the football in the scrimmage they had last Saturday. So there is that uh, danger when you let the quarterbacks go live. Well, I think they want him to go live just because they don't have any live film on him. The other kids have been in uh, games with live bullets coming at them, so I, I, I kind of like the idea of letting the guy go live. Tell us about Kevin Steele. Uh, I don't hear a ton about him and the defense down there, but how how is he different than Will Muschamp, and how are the players taken to him? You know, I talked to Kevin Steele last night, and I've asked a lot of players about him and the assistant coaches, and you know, he seems to be fitting in really well. And uh, you know, he's a lot calmer personality than Will Muschamp is. But what they're doing, schematically, is not all that different. And uh, you know, with the way the offenses are playing down, guys, there's going to be a lot of uh, nickel coverage. That means 
you got to have uh, a guy there like that rover star position who can really cover and pass, cover a, a wide receiver one-on-one. So there will be a lot of uh, five defensive backs out on the field, and you know they've been heavily working on that this spring. And it's not like the old days where you're going to see teams line up with three linebackers or even four linebackers a lot of time and you know, play smash mouth football. There are a few teams that do that, but it's pretty rare you have to defend against that right now for a long period of time, maybe in short yardage situations. So, you know, Steel is well liked by the players, and uh, they've had a lot of really good things to say about him. And, uh, you know, right now it looks like the whole new defensive staff has come together really well, and uh, that's something that I've really noticed. It's something that, uh, you know, talking to some former players who uh, come back and watch practice, that's something that stood out to them, too, is how well. Uh, Kevin Steele is getting along with the players and the assistant coaches and how they're working together. So uh, those are all good things. Now, the offensive line coach, is that the one that came from Penn State? Uh, yeah, offensive my... line coach, Herb Hand, yep. He is okay. the new line coach. And uh, uh, he's got a lot of personality now. And he's also someone who worked with Gus Malzahn for two seasons out in Tulsa. They were co offensive coordinators. I believe it was 2007. 2008 in that range, and uh, they, uh, or yeah, I was right, and they were uh, a very good tag team duo. And he tried to hire Herb Hand a couple times previously, and uh, wasn't able to do it. But this time he did, and uh, Herb Hand is a delightful guy. You get to know he's he's one of those A type plus personalities. Tell us about. Uh, I heard some. Stuff out of the LSU camp. I mean, they are bragging on Damian Craig, uh, saying, you know, he's kind of – I think sometimes guys get known as just a recruiter, so that's all you think they are as a recruiter. But they're talking about how great he is in the film room, uh, on the on the field with the uh, with the players. How big of a loss was that really, or do you think uh, they really replaced him? They really are bragging on him at LSU right now. Yeah, I like Damian. I've known him since he was in high school, and uh... – you know, he's a detail guy. He's an X's and O's guy. And when he was uh, at Auburn as quarterback, you know, he spent so much time over the football complex. The joke was he needed a cot just moving and live over there because he was so serious about football. So I'm not so surprised that, you know, we get a report like that from him at LSU. Uh, Cody Burns has come in and replaced him. Cody Burns, a, a quarterback in high school, Came in, played some quarterback for Auburn, converted to wide receiver. He's a young, energetic coach, and uh, you know the wide receivers all like him a lot. And uh, so, plus you know he grew up in Malzahn's system. He's a, he's a good fit for what they're doing, and uh, we'll see how good a recruiter he is. He's young and energetic. He's got a lot of personality. Uh, so we'll see. But so far, uh, I think the coaches have been very happy with Cody Burns and. I know the players have. Uh, uh, go ahead. Let me you ask got, you what, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to ask you about the Clemson game. Is is the the next year? Is that game? Uh, oh, is that going to be an opening game for Auburn return to Clemson? Right. Right. It will be, <laughs> and uh, it's a pretty challenging opening game. And uh, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson, in my opinion, is probably be gone. The early front runner for the Heisman Trophy, and he he certainly deserves it. And uh, you know, he will be one of the uh, tougher challenges for any defense to face. Well, that'll be a tough ticket down there in Auburn. That game, woo! Uh, that place will be jumping. All right, just flipping over to basketball, Bruce Pearl. Uh, the signing date is coming up, April thirteenth. Are they still going to try to add to their roster? Or are they having any guys transfer out of there? I know Alabama's got two. Any movement on their roster, and will they look to sign anybody in the late signing period? Uh, they will probably add somebody in the late signing period. Now, exactly who, I don't know. Uh, I would think if they can really get it, they're looking for a graduate transfer point guard, you know, a guy who's 6'3", 6'4", and is physical, and who can come in and play a lot right away because their point guards are going to have coming in 
is a, a true freshman. He, and he'll be the only true point guard on the team. So I think they're going to try to go that way. There's a possibility uh, they'll bring in uh, either a high school or prep school big guy, or maybe even a graduate transfer big guy. But you know, right now the uh, there hasn't been any movement out at all from the team. So they got the three early signees, and um, I would I say the max two more guys for the uh, in the spring period. All right, the most important question. Have you gotten to ride in Gus's new car yet? No, but uh, he, uh, he hinted he might let me drive it. But uh, it is a very impressive vehicle, to say the does least. He, does he take that thing to work every day now? Uh, not every day. Uh, I've seen him in his pickup truck some days. But uh, uh, it, it needs to be red. Uh, it's sort of midlife crisis, red sports car syndrome, classic vehicle. It's uh, black, and uh, it it looks fast, and uh, I think it is really fast. You should have got an orange one. We're having fun with it. It should have been orange for Auburn. Well, uh, yeah, it could be orange, too, but I just, <laughs> you know, the classic uh, classic line about red sports cars syndrome for middle-aged males yeah. I pertain here. All right. After, so, it, after, it, after it came to an end this year, where would you rank just in the SEC, Auburn's recruiting? Football. For which sport? Football, football, I'm sorry. Football. Uh, you know, you know. I think it's, I've got to go back and look. I think it's probably top ten in the country. So it's right up there. At, in the league, is, is the, it, in the league, is it just the SEC is in the top five? Uh, probably is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they're really happy with the recruiting class. Particularly the defensive line, and uh, what one of the guys um, uh, already on campus, Marlon Davidson from Greenville High School, what a really great start to spring practice. He was running with the first team uh, in the scrimmage Saturday, and that's not something I was expecting to so, see. Yeah, he's a high school All American, and you know, a guy who was really heavily recruited. But that is unusual, to say the least, particularly for a defensive lineman, and considering. I mean, there's a lot of defensive linemen back from last year's team. So, uh, yeah, so far so good. And, uh, you know, they've got, um, I think it's like seven guys who were in early going through spring practice. And so far, none of those guys has uh, been a dud at all. They've all been very good. And uh, then they're going to get the rest of the guys in in May or June. So, so far, it looks like the class is very impressive. All right, Mark, before we let you go, what time is the game uh, this Saturday? I guess it's the – I guess they call 3 it. 3 o'clock uh, on, live on the SEC Network. And uh, I think we're going to do the format. It'll be the one offense versus the two defense and vice versa. And then uh, it'll be threes versus threes and whatever. And if you really want to see the front line players, you just need to watch the first half. I doubt they'll play much in the second half. So that is on the SEC Network? Correct. All right. And what, 3 o'clock, you said? That's right. All right. Well, great. Tell, tell everybody where to find you guys' stuff, and uh, we appreciate the segment today. Okay. It's uh, inside the Auburn Tigers magazine and football newsletter. You can call us at 1-800-234-1716 to order it. You can find us on the newsstand around the state. Our website is autigers.com. We're part of the Scout Network. We appreciate it, Mark. Thank, Thank you very Mark. much. Thank Bye, you, Mark. Matt.